Hi, everybody. We have Richard from the Southern California Commodore and Amiga Network. He is... Whoa, whoa. Oh, he bows. And he's going to give a demonstration on the gang cartridge. Gang the 64. Gang 64, a cartridge I know nothing about. It says mini gang cartridge. Mini gang. Yeah. So it comes from Poland? It comes from Poland. Yep. Okay, go ahead, Richard. It comes Richard. in a VHS video cartridge case. <laughs> it bills itself as being the best Commodore cartridge ever made. And so, wow. and it pretty much is, as far as I can tell. The best cartridge for Commodore <laughs> C64. Good. So it's like they took a whole bunch of other cartridges and jammed all that functionality into this one device. And so. I'm sure most of you know about the SD2 IEC device, which allows you to have disk images and mount them, you know, and, and use it as floppy instead of having an actual floppy drive. It's got that built into it. It's got an EEPROM built into it that has a whole bunch of software that you can load, all sorts of diagnostic tools for the drive and for the computer and some games. Uh, they Apparently, I researched this a little bit, and there's not very much information about it, but it says 100% Golden Cartridge 13 Games Pack. So I thought, what is the Golden Cartridge 13 Games Pack? And as near as I can tell, it was something that was produced somewhere in Europe at, in the late 80s, sort of in the late stage of the Commodore's life. And it was just a bunch of different popular games that were crammed onto an EEPROM, and there was some little you know, modification to basics so that you could select the game. Maybe it booted up with the menu or something, so you could select the game. So all those 13 games are on here. There's a uh, action replay, most of that functionality is on here. The, one of the guys that worked on this also developed the CBM Asteroids game for the Commodore 64, and so that one is also on here. And then there's uh, Final 3 Plus, which I don't know if anybody <laughs> has heard about this, the Final Cartridge 3. Plus. So all that stuff that the Final Cartridge 3 can do, this thing can do. So one of those things, which I actually have never used, is a freeze function. So maybe, I don't know, like you're playing a game and you gotta go get some coffee or something and the game doesn't have a pause button. You can just hit freeze and it you know halts the machine until you unfreeze it. And, oh, okay, so you can. Take a snapshot of the RAM. Right, yep, you can hack, hack the copy protection of software. And it's got a reset button, which is awesome, because the normal, see this guy has been hacked to have a reset button, but normally these machines don't have them. So it uses a micro SD card, which is really hard to get in and out of there, but yeah, it fits in the end just like that. So then it also, I don't have a serial cable, yeah. So for the SD to IEC, you have to plug it into the serial port, right? So it acts like a floppy drive. And so it comes with this short little cable, and it just goes like that. So is, is this guy turned off right now? Yes, it is. So I can plug it in. And then, is this a 1541? Uh, yeah, just uh, remove the SD to IEC there. What do you have? Oh, that's oh, what you want. Okay, how are we going to do this? So okay. I can just unplug that guy. And then well, let me unplug the 1571 out there. There you go. Okay, the 1571 is detached. Hold on, but one of these is video. video. That was, I think you just detached video. No, that's 1571. Is this video? No, that's video. This is. Okay, there it is. That's video. Okay. So then we'll plug that into the serial port. And see what we get. So here's the here's the main screen. When you boot up, it gives you some helpful hints. And let's right. So there, it's got all these arrow commands. So we've got an arrow with a question mark. Is that help? Oh, that didn't miss. Arrow question mark. So here's about all the stuff that they can do. The F keys, they've remapped all the F keys. Uh, you can use for browsing the stuff that's on the SD to IEC, that micro SD card, and uh, running, running the software. And there's the arrow commands. So arrow D, like it's sort of, it's kind of like a shell, like a disk shell, like DOS, where it has the notion of 
the current drive. And so you can set the current device to device 8, and then when you take a directory listing, it will show you what's on the directory of device 8, right? And then you can actually map that arrow X, fixed device number. Like if you have a, like this 1571 drive, say it's hardwired for, to be device number 8, and you don't have a switch or anything to switch it between 8 and 9, so it has to be 8. And so in order to avoid conflict, the SD to IEC needs to be device number 9. So with that arrow X, you can select one of the devices on the list and say select the SD to IEC and then map it to drive number 9. And so then they can coexist. So we can run asteroid by hand <coughs> on A. And arrow F is like a whole bunch of different programs that are included on that 8 megabyte EEPROM that you can uh, load and run. What's that fit? Head fit. Head fit. Arrow. I think that is something to do with the disk. Let's find out. So there's our monitor commands. They added some like shortcut commands to load something. You can just hit arrow, like you can or I mean slash, like forward slash star is the same as load star coming in coming in. So you can save a little bit of time there. Read error channel. So if you just hit the add, that's a new command that they added. Instead of does anybody actually know how to read the error channel on a 1541 drive? Yeah. Right, what is it? Open one copy, count 15, <laughs> something like that. UI, question mark, something like that. So they, they made that a little bit easier. And then you can select the different devices by hitting at 8, at 9, at 10, formatting days. And it's got built-in uh, fast loaders, right? So if you do hook it up to a 1571 or 1581 or 1541, it will use the fast loaders. So then this is a, there's a machine language monitor, and I've never even used this one. Like people who are hacking and writing games for the Commodore are using the machine language monitor. So let's see head fit, right? Let's see. Oh, oh. Yeah. it's a German language disk <laughs> calibration program. Oh. Mid return program or lossing. Oh right, it's mid return. Lossing. <laughs> So here's arrow A. Um, why do I keep hitting space? There's another arrow A. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, be. I bumped the reset. Uh, Darn it. We know it works. plug it into the Commodore, and it has a built-in auto-fire. Mm. So for this game, auto-fire will save your life. <laughs> the asteroids don't have a chance. <laughs> I have no idea which choices were it is. Uh, you'll find out. I thought the Coco was bad in its joystick port selection, because nobody could agree on which joystick port is supposed to be player one, and which choice of four is supposed to be player two. Because it had left and right, it didn't have like one and two. Like if you have port one and port two, it seems obvious that port one should be player one, and port two should be player two, right? But they have the same problem on the Commodore, because I was just playing the other day like 10 different games, and every single game required the opposite port to what my choice is trying to So yeah, that's Way's Asteroid game, which is a, it's a really good version of port of uh, Asteroids, the arcade game. Uh, what else we want to show? So Arrow F, this is all the stuff that's inside of that EEPROM. So we can look through all the different 
there's an alignment disc, ALPS disc tester, 1581. There's the diagnostic cartridges. This is the official Commodore diagnostic cartridge. Disc doctor, and line, SID test. Should we test your SID? Sure. So F3 is run. Oh, good to test. Do you have a real SID in this machine? Yes, there is a real SID. It's not a nano SID or swing SID or anything like that. Yes. SDHC card, and they were all like the correct versions that would be able to run from the SD to IEC because the SD to IEC doesn't emulate the disk all that well. It's not like a cycle accurate. So a lot of games, like if they have their own fast load routines, they don't work at all, right? And so I have that 1541 Ultimate UK 1541, and that thing emulates the drive cycle exact, and so it works like with pretty much all the software. Like you can just go download stuff off of the internet and it'll work. But with the SD to IEC, if you go and download something off the internet and try to run it, it probably will not work because it's not the right version. You need to get a version that's all self-contained in like a single PRG and it doesn't load other stuff off of the disk. And so with those versions, this thing is great because it'll load super fast. So I don't know, what do we want to look at? So there's this thing called a magic key, which is F5. So if you 
just go to one of these lines in the directory and hit F5, then it will go inside of that directory and then take another directory. So this is what's inside of that C64 and D64 directory. So let's go here. Yeah, that looks really easy. Uh -oh. that's not So then that shows what's inside of that directory. So I'm going to go to Terminal Junior and hit F5. So now this is what's inside of that directory. I've got a disk image, which is Terminal Junior. So I go up to the disk image and I hit F5 and it mounts the disk image. Yeah. And now we're looking at what's inside of that directory. So then if I hit Magic Key again, it's load star comma 8 comma 1, hit enter. And then it's got the fast loader and it's, you know, the basic is patched. So it even tells you like what areas of memory it's loading into and F3 is running. TSC machine? Yes, it is. I wonder if it only works on PAL machines. Oh. I didn't bring a PAL C64 with me. Right, because these guys are European. And yeah. so he wanted, he wanted me to explicitly mention in the video, these are NTSC machines. Like, it would work on NTSC machines because apparently, I don't know, a lot of people, there must be a lot of compatibility problems. Find out what the Easter egg was. Easter egg. <laughs> the Easter egg. Oh, the Easter egg. Yeah, I know the Easter egg. He told me what the Easter egg is. Uh, that's it? Yep. Ah, look at that. Cool. <laughs> cool. So why did they use that name, Richard? Gang C64? I don't know. That's what they call this cartridge. I don't know if they're like the gang of Commodore programmers, <laughs> like MS-13. Polish <laughs> style or what? <laughs> or does gang mean something in Polish? It you know? may. Yeah. Um, so that's basically the stuff that I know how to how to run. So there's another thing. Final three plus mode. Push and hold reset button next to freeze button, then let go of reset button. So that's 
see if I can do that. There we go. So I don't know what this thing is, but I mean, some people must know. Yeah. It's final cartridge. Right. What is the final cartridge like? What can it do? <laughs> it's a. It's a gooey. Final cartridge three had a gooey. It was slow, but it Ooh, kind of worked. Look at that. $50. So then there's another thing too. This. Uh, we need a mouse. Oh wow. That jitters a lot. <laughs> I don't know if they've even announced a price yet, but I mean, I oh, yours is like a prototype. It's it's one of the one of the early versions. Yeah, I don't know if they're. Uh, what what mode are we in right here, uh, this Richard? This is like the final cartridge desktop 2.0. Oh, okay. So I imagine maybe if you have a a mouse, what was the mouse? 1351. If you have a 1351 mouse, maybe this thing would be able to. Using that uh, we do have a 1351 in one of the boxes. I could pull one out. Uh, the Amiga mouse is different than the uh, Commodore mouse. Commodore mouse relies on the SID chip for its direction. And the mouse goes into port number one usually. So yeah, see, somebody wrote all the software and for all these different things, right? For the SD2 IEC, the final cartridge. And I think these guys basically ripped it all off. <laughs> right? They just like <laughs> dumped the EEPROM and like, shoved it in here, along with all this other crap. Put the menus together to get to them. Right? So I wonder if E5 Frog and Heather and Gerard and Will and all these guys know that their stuff is inside of the game cartridge. January, so this is even recent, right? This final three plus cartridge must huh. be something that was developed just a few years ago. Hmm. What's Weezer? Oh, Weezer. 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 <laughs> what kind of three is? Oh. Looks like it froze. Yeah. Well, they catch fire. Oh, there's preferences. What kind of food? Okay, I'm slightly colorblind. I can't see all of those changes. <laughs> oh, yes. 
Ooh. Now it looks like uh, Atari Toss. <laughs> uh, my bar didn't be upset if it said that. Real time. So yeah, there's like a nice little GUI. No icons though. System here. System basic. So now we're back to ooh, look at that. We'll get the color scheme too. Ah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, England. England. Mm -hmm. How many creatures do you have there? Wow. <laughs> so, Richard, are you able to load a uh, planet doll from it? Yes, I think so. Is that right? These are, no, they are disk images that I got after purchasing the game. Like, they sent me, uh, I bought some of the games I bought on physical disc because there were no other option, but the rest of the games I only bought digital copies, and so they sent me a download link, and I downloaded them. So yeah, we'll find out if those guys will work. I kind of think they will not. So Planet Golf, here's Planet Golf. I want to see the episode too. The other thing is. This guy is currently set for device nine, right? So I think I want to change that. You go to X, so now I want to select this SD to IC, and I want it to be on disk eight. So now let's go to disk eight. Now it's on disk eight, device eight. So then we go here, we have a magic key, correct, cut it off, cut the magic key, and then magic key again. I think it's dead. It should load. Is Probably. there is there uh, a activity light on your cartridge that shows the that the files being yeah, accessed? Yeah, there's a couple of lights. I don't know what they mean. Oh, okay. So, but the SD to IEC does not have a light. It does. Yes, it does. Does it? Yeah. Uh huh. That's true. Okay. Maybe it's just mine. I bought the one that looks like a mini 1541, mm -hmm. and oh. I never see the lights on it. Maybe because it's, it's. It's in the buttons. Oh, okay. It's sticking out in the front or something, and I only see the top of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it looks like. Yeah, it doesn't. Such as it looks. So let's go back and. Uh, Demos. So these are a bunch of different demos people told me about and I downloaded and check it out. Isn't this the isn't the first one a C128 demo? ASX Machina? Yeah. I don't think so. Go check it out. I have a documented demo party here. It'll run off of the SD to IEC. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I, I got this one. He actually recommended because I told him like uh, like anything that I download off of Puet.net or whatever like demo it's sites, it doesn't work. Yeah. They have their own like crazy fast loaders and stuff. Oh. Uh, I have some recent demos like 2015, 2016 that are absolutely gorgeous, but they have such crazy fast loaders like they'll have a mural that's scrolling across and it's like super detailed and it's just loading constantly while it's scrolling because it's so much data. Wow, and it's able to keep up. But yeah, but that like that particular demo, half the time it doesn't work on my real 1541. <laughs> I think just because, it just can't keep up. yeah, it, it maybe it gets some CRC errors and it has to read a sector like several times. And so, yeah. But the, the so only how device... Did, how did you find out these demos were on the IEC? That's the IEC? I, I copied them onto them. Oh, I downloaded them. them. I, Wengi told me that this particular demo will work for the SD2 IEC. So I downloaded it, copied it onto that micro SD cartridge, and now we can check that out. 
So I have some of this demo on my latest YouTube video, but I really condensed it, like I cut it down. Like all this stuff. Video Mm -hmm. Made any video? Yeah, I just really, I just posted it like a week ago, and I didn't put anything about it on the scan mailing list yet. I, oh, okay. I had it on too, but I was too busy. I'll well, put it on the forum. Yeah? yeah. Yeah, I saw your forum when I was searching for Convex yesterday. Oh. <laughs> with some of the later demos, because they're you gotta gorgeous. Get a, you got to get a Pi 1541 going, man. Yeah. I'm going to work on that. Yeah. Those things are supposed to be really accurate, too, right? We're going to check this one out. Okay, so it's machine. Ooh, there's two. There's this one. This is. Yeah, there's. disk and next disk and I've never used it so I'm not sure exactly what it's supposed to be. So let's see if this guy will work. I think I started putting these demos on here to test and see if they would run and I think they don't run. I have a flashing red light. Yeah. Oh. So the flashing red light is probably the red light dead. Uh, and it's still flashing. This gotta be oh here we go. There's a separate button to reset the SD2 IC. So I had to get that one. See, that didn't do work. But, this is over here. I know the way these demo works. This one works. I why the screen blanks when it's not. Thank <laughs> you. 
it's actually so simple, right? You just have three channels. Each one can do like a square wave, a triangle wave, or noise. Like, and they can get like digitized sound out of it. It's amazing. Yeah. Richard, this this is just a prototype cartridge, or it's like early production, I think. So, are these are in production right now? I think they are going into production. I don't know if you can buy them or not. You may have to speak Polish or use Google Translate. Uh, I'm uh, sure they're going to be sold through, you know, their website. Uh, is there a pricing on them yet? I do not know. Their eventual production price is going to be, but the, like he made that asteroids cartridge, and it seems like it was cheap. I don't remember how much I paid. I don't remember thinking it wasn't very much. Okay. So all we do is just keep checking the website to see if it'll <laughs> when they're in production. Yeah, let's maybe there's some documentation. Here. There's this gang c64.com, but I think last time I tried that, it was dead. Oh. There was nothing there. They hadn't built it yet. Okay. It's just uh, in the works. Mm. 
Well, thank you very much, Richard. Thank you.